Welcome to the 2024 Run Disney Springtime Surprise Event Guide. This event marks the final event of the 2023-2024 Run Disney season for the Florida held races. In this video, we'll be going through all of the nitty gritty details of each event, including the newest after race party offering Springtime Surprise Splash, which is held at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park. For the final time this in-person Florida season, Adam Ball welcomes us with a letter talking about how excited not only he and the other cast members are about this weekend, but also how excited the celebrated charity Make-A-Wish Central and Northern Florida is about the upcoming events. Once you've read through this welcome page, you can take a look through the other sections of the guide. Now, let me preface this by saying, if you've watched any of the other guides from the season, a lot of this information will be redundant. Feel free to use the timestamps in the description box below or along the timeline bar to navigate to the other sections of the video that you would like. First up, is the weekend events tab. In this section, you'll find important information and no, it's not clickbait. It's actually very important information. You'll learn about the different events of the weekend, including the expo, as well as each of the races and yoga. Here is where you will also see highlighted booths from the various vendors that will be featured in the expo halls. There's always a lot of useful information and fun tidbits in this section, so it's definitely worth your time to browse through. But I do wanna highlight the important information section first, especially since I know that there are quite a few first timers amongst us. First and foremost, there is a link to a YouTube video explaining the costuming guidelines. Please familiarize yourself with the guidelines and make changes, if needed, to your costumes for the races. Event waivers and check-in passes. All participants must complete their digital waivers prior to picking up their bibs at the expo the day before your first race, okay? Having trouble locating your waiver? Well, you can find it in your Run Disney account on the Run Disney website under your current registrations. There will be a notice or a banner that alerts you that there are some documents that need your attention. This is the digital waiver. In the event that you cannot sign the digital waiver for whatever reason, there will be paper copies available for you at the expo. According to the digital event guide, your expo check-in pass will automatically be loaded into your account on April the 15th. Once it's viewable, take a screenshot of it and save it to your phone. Better yet, mark it as a favorite picture. You will need to show this pass as well as a valid photo ID in order to pick up your bib. Information on your pass includes whether your waiver is signed, your bib number, and if you're coast to coast eligible. Race day information is the same across all distances, so let's touch on it here, okay? Gear check is available for the 5K, 10K, and 10 miler. You will receive your race shirts at the expo in a large, clear plastic bag. Do not throw this bag out because that is what you will use as your check bag on race mornings. Claim tags and stickers will be given to you when you drop your bag off each morning. Bags left at the end of the race will be turned in to Lost and Found located at Epcot Guest Relations outside of the entrance to the park. If you're interested in food and beverage before or after the race, make sure that you have your ID and debit or credit card with you. Various food and beverage options are available in the reunion area, including my personal favorite, the Joffrey Stand. If you've seen any of my event guides before, you know that we usually touch on race etiquette towards the end. This time though, I'm mixing it up a little bit and we're discussing it now, <laughs> right now. All right, headphones are okay on course. I love my shocks, but you need to be aware of your surroundings in the event that important information is being conveyed to you. Trust me when I say that there are very few quiet stretches of these courses and entertainment will be plentiful. In order to receive your pictures from the race, your bib needs to be on the front of your person and visible at all times. Your pictures will be automatically dropped into your My Disney Experience app once the race is completed and after you enter the code, which is located in the digital event guide or on the back of your bib. The photographers do not scan magic bands or cards like they do in the parks. A word about PhotoPass photographers here. Do not, I repeat, 
with emphasis, <laughs> do not stop in front of the photographer to have your picture taken. They take multiple pictures in rapid succession and they got your picture, I promise. This poses a safety risk not only for you, but for the photographer and the runners that are around you. This is a guaranteed way to get yelled at on course, not only by staff, but by fellow runners. Want to get yelled at? Stop at the PhotoPass photographer. <laughs> When on course, if you're with friends or family, walk or run no more than two people wide. The course narrows in several spots. We'll talk about those later. By taking up the width of the walkway, you are again posing a safety risk to those around you. Also, several, several of us see this as a Red Rover-esque challenge and will absolutely burst through your line to pass by. While on course, please remember that runners stay to the left, walkers to the right. If you're like me and run with intervals, etiquette requires that you raise your hand to signal an upcoming speed change. So slowing to a walk or accelerating into a run. Pacing, we haven't talked about pacing in an event guide in a while, so <laughs> we're due. So let's discuss. Run Disney requires a 16 minute per mile pace at a minimum. Now this can be confusing because this 16 minute pace only starts when the last person crosses the start line. The last people to start the race and remain at the last of the race are the balloon ladies. They are the visible representation of the minimum pace allowed. If at any time on course you fall behind them, you can be swept. This is why you've seen people make such a big deal about putting as much space between you and the balloon ladies as possible. The more of a buffer you have, the more time you have on course for character photos, bathroom stops, etc. There are several other clickable boxes here. However, we will be going through this information for each of the specific events. All right, moving on to the official events of the weekend. Springtime surprise consists of five events. Yes, five, because I count the expo as an event. This year we have the expo, yoga, the 5K, 10K, and 10 miler. First up on the event roster is springtime surprise yoga. This one hour yoga event takes place on Thursday, April 18th and begins at 5 a.m. at Disney's Hollywood Studios. The parking lot for those of you driving personal vehicles will open at 4 a.m. and security will also begin at 4 a.m. Participant check-in begins at 4.15 and you must arrive by 4.45 in order to participate. Make sure that you have your yoga check-in pass as well as a photo ID with you in order to gain entry into this pre-ticketed event. The location of Yoga Within Hollywood Studios is most likely the same place it was last year, which was in front of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and then extending down Hollywood Boulevard. Just like with Princess Yoga, spots in the venue are on a first come, first serve basis, so plan to be there early if you'd like a spot up close. If you're staying on property, transportation to this event is provided, but it is extremely limited in time window. As with prior yoga experiences, if you miss the single bus, you've missed the event as there will not be multiple buses running. The resort routes and specific times are located in the event guide, and I highly suggest that you check those out. Now, after you've set the tone for a relaxing weekend, it'll be time for the Expo. The Expo is a three-day event and all runners must attend the Expo prior to their first racing event in order to get their bibs. The Expo takes place at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex on Thursday, April the 18th from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, April 19th from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., and Saturday, April 20th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Bus transportation to and from the Expo is available from all Disney Resort hotels and is scheduled to begin 30 minutes prior to the Expo opening. As always, you're more than welcome to drive a personal vehicle to the ESPN Complex. Info boards with resort-specific information and instructions will be located in or around the lobby of your Walt Disney World Resort Hotel, including the Swan and Dolphin and Shades of Green. 
An inside tip, take a picture of this info board once you've located it and save it to your favorites in your picture folder. So similar to what you would have done with your Expo check-in pass. That way you'll have it easily accessible for the remainder of the weekend. Gold and Platinum Club Run Disney members, on day one of the Expo, you are allowed early access to the official Run Disney merchandise with Platinum shopping beginning at 8.30 a.m. and Gold beginning at 9. Make sure that you have your valid ID and screenshot your membership status from the website and keep it on your phone. I've had staff ask for this inconsistently between Disneyland and Disney World, so just plan on having it and being over-prepared. <laughs> As with Princess, Marathon Weekend, Disneyland Half Marathon Weekend, and Wine and Dine, a virtual queue will be utilized for day one only of the official Run Disney merchandise, which is located in the Advent Health Arena. How do you join the virtual queue? It's really easy. If you've joined a queue for major attractions in the parks like Rise of the Resistance, Guardians, or even Tron, you'll find this process nearly identical. When you open your My Disney Experience app, go to the hamburger, the three line menu at the bottom right of the screen. Once there, you'll navigate down to My Visit, that header there, and then tap Virtual Queue. In this screen, you'll see the Run Disney Merchandise Virtual Queue option listed. Best advice, go in and confirm your party prior to the 8.30 a.m. queue opening. You can have up to six people, including yourself, don't forget yourself like I did, almost, on your list. Once 8.30 strikes, refresh the page and then click Join Queue. You will be assigned a group number and given an approximate return time. Please note, you can only join the queue if you're within about 45 miles of property or on property. Make sure push notifications are enabled as this will be the way that you're alerted that it's time to go spend your money. <laughs> shop, I mean shop. When it's time for your group to enter the building, you'll pull up the QR code and a cast member will scan it to allow entry into the building. Here's another pro tip. If your entire group is together, only one of you needs to have the QR codes pulled up in the app. They will scan all of them from there. Okay, but what if your return time to shop is later in the afternoon? What are some things that you can do? Well, you can shop in the exhibitor hall, of course. The athletic center is home to race shirt pickup, which by the way, you'll have to have a bib to pick up, just FYI. The Run Disney Showcase exhibits and exhibitors, food and beverages and transportation and event information. Forgot your fuel? Don't worry, there's options there. Forgot your socks like I did at Princess? No problem, there's options there. Do you need KT tape? Yep, they've got you covered as well. After you've perused the Athletic Center options, or before, either way, there are no rules, you do you, don't forget to pick up your bibs in the State Farm Field House. Not only are your bibs located here, but also runner relations and some fun photo ops. During Princess, we had accurately, thank you, accurately hypothesized that character meet and greets had been moved to the Field House where your bibs are. I would imagine it's gonna be the same for this weekend and the graphic in the digital event guide reflects this as well. Okay, it really seemed to help with the flow of traffic in the official merchandise building. It gave us more room to kind of be around. Something to mention here as well, if for any reason you do not want your bib to be tracked during the weekend, be that for safety or just personal preference, you will need to go to Runner Relations and ask for your tracking to be removed. I've had to start doing this for all of my races for various reasons, and they have never given me a hard time about it. Unfortunately, we live in a tech savvy world and people can and do use that information for nefarious reasons. It's definitely worth standing in line for if you need it. In order to pick up your bibs, you will need your Expo check-in pass and a valid ID. All together now, ready? There is no day of race bib pickup. So if you're running the challenge or the 5K, you must pick up your bib on Thursday, okay? Let me add this too. I heard and was told that people tried to pick up their bibs morning of the races, especially the half marathon for Princess, and were denied the ability to do so. So what that tells me is enough of y'all abused it that Run Disney has now taken it away. So you have to go pick it up the day before your first race. Got it? Good.
All right, your expo check-in pass will be sent to you via email on April the 15th. Another word here, you and only you can pick up your bibs. Unless, unless you're picking up the bib for a minor runner. Your husband, friend, mother, father, whatever, cannot pick up your bibs if you are over the age of 18. You have to be there to do that yourself. Ready to explore Neverland? Go on an adventure to Paradise Falls and survey the Pride Lands? Let's dive into the running events of the weekend, which culminate in Stitches Ohana Challenge. The 5K. The 5K is Friday morning, April the 19th, with a race start time of 5 a.m. and a start and finish line location in the Epcot parking lot. Race transportation will be provided from the Disney Resort Hotels, and it begins at 3 a.m. If you're driving a personal vehicle, you will need to arrive no later than 4 a.m., and parking is always free. Please note there will not be monorail or Skyliner transportation available during this race weekend. Those staying at monorail or Skyliner resorts will need to utilize bus or personal vehicle transportation every race morning. Once you arrive on property, you'll be taken through security as if you were entering Epcot during normal park hours and then allowed to enter the pre-race staging area. If you need gear check, medical tents, extra safety pins, and athletes with disabilities check-in, you will find it here. There will also be food and beverage for purchase from food trucks and the event tents, which are located adjacent to the stage. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go right now. Don't worry, there's porta potties here by the dozens. Don't wanna use the porta party? Well, then make sure you hit the last real bathroom before the staging area. And it's located to your right as you make your way to the staging area. And there's usually a long line here, so it'll be hard to miss it. All corrals open at 3.45 a.m. Please note, start group A will close 20 minutes prior to race start time, so 4.40. Start group B will close five minutes prior to race start, so 4.55. C closes at 5.05, D closes at 5.15, and E will close once the start line area is clear. If you're in a higher corral with an earlier closing time and choose to show up either late or you lollygag by the stage, you will not be allowed to join those corrals once they have closed. You will be taken to the next available open corral and you will start the race from there. If, as a lot of us do, you have friends running and you're not fortunate enough to all be in the same corral, I don't think that's ever happened. <laughs> the earlier, the friends in the earlier corrals can fall back to run with those in the lower. The lower cannot come forward to the higher. I will say, during Princess, myself and Ryan fell back to the last corral to start with the others in our group, and it was like the most fun I've had on course in a really, really long time. Starting farther back will not ruin your experience, I promise. We literally got every penny's worth of value out of that course, and I honestly can't wait to do it again. Spectating spots are limited to the start and finish line only for this course. The majority of it is run backstage and then on stage at Epcot, and the park won't be open to the general public at that time of the morning. The course. Here we go, off to the finish line. <laughs> the 5K starts in the Rocket parking lot. Once you cross the start line, you'll make a right turn along the back of the parking lot where you will begin to make your way backstage. Mile one is located just before the outdoor portion of Test Track. Hey Ryan, this is the part that Test Track is at and it's not a trash chute, okay? <laughs> you just realized that's Test Track? That's Test Track. Yeah. You just realized that's test track. I thought it was a trash shoot yeah. and it's, <laughs> and it's test well, track. You know. <laughs> this part right here, it's test track, okay? You'll then continue backstage and enter World Showcase between Mexico and Norway. Pro tip, if you're needing a bathroom stop at a real bathroom and not a porter pot Porta party, because it's not your jam, there are several standalone bathrooms in the World Showcase, with the first being in Norway. Continue your tour of World Showcase running by China, Germany, Italy, and the American Adventure, Japan, Morocco, and France. The one and only water stop on course will be located at the American Adventure. Mile two is located adjacent to the refreshment port and just before the port of entry shop. 
You'll continue like you're going to make another lap around World Showcase, only to hairpin turn, change directions, go back towards Spaceship Earth near Disney Traders. The most exciting portion of this course is the part where you will run right by the new Walt Disney statue that was unveiled late last year as part of the New World Celebration Gardens. In my opinion, this will be the photo to get on course for this race. Not only do you run by the original Dreamer, but you'll also once again get to run behind the attraction that should have been in Animal Kingdom. Yep, sound familiar? Journey of Water, inspired by Moana. Should have been in Animal Kingdom, I will continue to slowly die on this hill, if you haven't noticed. Next, we'll make the familiar run by Creation Shop right before making a right turn to run between Creation Shop and Connections Cafe. Again, as with the Princess 5K, we'll get to run literally right by Guardians of the Galaxy. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for some photo pass photographers here as well. Some of my favorite on-course pictures from the Princess 5K were taken in this exact spot. You may remember the one of the happy chef leaping in the air. That was where that was taken. You'll exit Epcot via the backstage area by Test Track and continue on to your glorious finish line located in the cast parking lot. Congratulations to you on your 5K. The 10K. The 10K will be held on Saturday, April 20th. Race start time is 5 a.m. with the start and finish locations in the Epcot parking lot. Race transportation will be provided from the Disney Resort Hotels and begins at 3 a.m. If you're driving a personal vehicle, you will need to arrive no later than 4 a.m. and parking is free. Please note there will not be monorail or Skyliner transportation available during this race weekend. Those staying at monorail or Skyliner resorts will need to utilize bus or personal vehicle transportation. Once you arrive on property, you will be taken through security as if you're entering Epcot during normal park hours and then allowed into the pre-race staging area. If you need gear check, medical tents, extra safety pins, and athletes with disabilities check-in, you will find it here. There will also be food and beverage for purchase from food trucks and the event tents, which are located adjacent to the DJ stage. Gotta go to the restroom? Well, don't worry. There's porta parties here by the dozens. Don't wanna use the porta party? Well, then make sure that you hit the last row bathroom before the staging area, which is located to your right as you make your way to the staging area. There is almost always a long line here, so it will be hard to miss. Runners, friends, and family can chat and hype each other up in the staging area until the corrals open at 3.45 a.m. Once the corrals open, runners only can proceed to their designated starting group. Your assigned corral will be located in the top of your bib, and it will be a letter A, B, C, D, E, etc. Please note, if you're running with a group and you're in different corrals, the members in the higher corrals can always fall back to the lower ones. You cannot jump into a higher one in order to run with your friends or family. Please note that start group A will close, or corral A will close 20 minutes prior to race start time, so 4.40. Corral B will close five minutes prior to start, so 4.55. Corral C closes at 5.05, D at 5.15, and E when the start line is clear. If you miss your corral and show up late, because you were lollygagging by the stage, or whatever, you will not be allowed to join the corral once it has closed. You'll be taken to the next available open corral and will start the race from there. Spectating. Spectating for this distance offers a few more options for seeing your favorite runner while on course. As with the 5K, the start and finish line areas are a safe bet. However, if you or your family and friends are staying in the boardwalk or beach club area resorts, they will be able to see you run by. All right, a word about spectating at the boardwalk, yacht, beach area versus the finish line. Due to the close proximity of the two locations, your friends and family will need to plan to see you at one or the other and not both. Due to road closures and the lack of Epcot being open that early, it will be nearly impossible for them to make it to the finish line before you cross it. Spectating within Epcot for this distance is not available as the park will not be open to the general public at that time. The course. Before we take a deep dive into the course, let's discuss the fact that it is the exact same course as the 2023 Springtime Surprise Weekend 10K with the exception of a small section between mile four and five. So if this sounds and feels familiar, it's because it is. 
The start line is in the Epcot parking lot, Rocket to be exact, and you'll proceed towards the main gates on Epcot Center Drive. Run through the toll plaza, watch out for those speed bumps, and continue on Epcot Center Drive. Mile one is located just prior to the hairpin turn, which turns you back around and headed back towards Epcot. Make sure that you wave to the people parallel to you on the course. There will be a water and medical stop along this section and just before you reach mile two. Mile two is located as you cross back into the Epcot parking lot and you make your way backstage. Next up on our adventure of the course is the backstage section behind the seas, the land, and the Imagination Pavilion. After you enter back on stage at the Imagination Pavilion, P.S. there's a bathroom there, you will find mile three. Continue towards World Showcase and begin your world tour starting in Canada, where all World Showcase tours should start, thank you. Go backstage again between Canada and the UK, just past my favorite Joffrey stand that's never open. <laughs> there is a water stop located here as well, and knowing how warm it will inevitably be, do not pass up any of the water stops, okay? Just don't, promise me you won't. Welcome back on stage at the Skyliner Station and continue towards the Yacht and Beach Club. You'll proceed around Crescent Lake until you make it to mile four, which will be near the Boardwalk Resort. Also, a medical tent will be located just before the bridge connecting Yacht and Beach and Boardwalk. Finish up the Boardwalk tour and make your way back over the bridge to enter Epcot once again via the International Gateway. Run across the bridge towards the France Pavilion and rather than going back towards Remy and backstage like we did in 23, you will be staying on the main path of World Showcase. The final water stop is located at the American Adventure Pavilion. And don't skip it, remember you promised me you wouldn't. Mile five is located at Germany. Almost there. Wrap up the visit to World Showcase and up towards Spaceship Earth. Take a right turn to run between Creation Shop and Connections Cafe, as well as another run by Guardians of the Galaxy, and then out towards Test Track. Leave Epcot backstage between Mission Space and Test Track. Mile six is parallel to the front entrance gates of Epcot, and your final turn will put you in the finisher chute. Congratulations on your 10K. The 10 miler. The 10 miler will be held on Sunday, April 21st. Race start time is 5 a.m. with a start and finish location in the Epcot parking lot. Race transportation will be provided from the Disney Resort hotels and begins at 3 a.m. If you're driving a personal vehicle, you will need to arrive no later than 4 a.m. and parking is free. Please note there will not be monorail or Skyliner transportation available during this race weekend. Those staying at monorail or Skyliner resorts will need to utilize bus or personal vehicle transportation. Once you arrive on property, you'll be taken through security as if you were entering Epcot during normal park hours and then allowed to enter the pre-race staging area. If you need gear check, medical tents, extra safety pins, and athletes with disabilities check-in, you will find it here. There will also be food and beverage for purchase from the food trucks and the event tents, which are located adjacent to the DJ stage. Want to use the porta parties? Porta potties? Don't worry, they're here by the dozens. Or you don't want to use the porta party? Yep. Well, make sure you use the last roll bathroom, which is before you enter the staging area, right through, right as you get through security on your right. There's usually a long line here, so it will be hard to miss. Runners, friends, and family can chat and hype each other up in the staging area until the corrals open at 3.30. Once the corrals open, runners and runners only can proceed to their designated corral. Your assigned corral will be located in the top of your bib and will be letter A, B, C, D, E, etc. Please note, if you're running with a group and you're in different corrals, the members in the higher corrals can always fall back to the lower ones, but you cannot jump into the higher one in order to run with your friends. Corral A will close 20 minutes prior to race start time, so 4.40. Corral B will close at race start, so 5. Corral C closes at 5.15, D at 5.30, and E when the start line is clear. If by chance you miss your corral and you show up late because you were lollygagging by the stage or were stuck in the bathroom, you will not be allowed to join your corral once it is closed. You will be taken to the next available open corral and you will start the race from there. Spectating. As with other races this weekend, spectating options are at the start and finish line, but also a few places around the course. 
portions of the course do run by the boardwalk resort side of the boardwalk behind Epcot. Due to the close proximity of the boardwalk to the start, your family will need to decide whether they want to see you at the start or at the boardwalk, one or the other, not both. Due to road closures and the lack of Epcot being open for them to walk through, it will be nearly impossible for them to make it from the start to the boardwalk or the boardwalk to the finish before you cross. Another option would be to cheer or spectate from the Skyliner station in Hollywood Studios. The Skyliner usually begins running 60 to 90 minutes prior to park opening. There are early park hours that day, I've already looked. So your friends or family or cheer squad, if they're staying at a Skyliner resort, theoretically, they may be able to make it to Hollywood Studios by the time that you reach it. However, a word of caution though, Hollywood Studios is located just through the 5K point of this 10 mile course. So this option is absolutely a gamble for cheering if you're more, if you're on the quicker side, okay? And you're gonna make it to and through Hollywood Studios in under an hour, which a lot of you will. My honest opinion, you're better off cheering from the Epcot parking lot or the finish line. Now, while this course is scenic and jam packed with things to see, it is not, it is not the most spectator friendly. The course for the final time, this on property Florida side season, We'll kick things off in the Epcot parking lot before heading reverse of what you would have run the morning prior if you ran the 10K, with the exception of the first mile. Mile one is located backstage near Test Track. Continue backstage until you reach the entrance of World Showcase at Mexico. The first water stop is located at the American Adventure. Remain on the main walk of World Showcase and pass by Japan, Morocco, and then France. Travel over the bridge connecting France to the UK. Mile two is located just as you enter backstage between the UK and Canada. Ready to make your way to Hollywood Studios? It's time! You'll run around the boardwalk side of Crescent Lake before making your way through no personal space alley. A water stop will be located at the boardwalk tennis courts and just before you cross under East Buena Vista Drive. Mile three is located at the Disney Resort bus bays at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Run up towards the front of Hollywood Studios, but quickly dip into backstage before coming back onto Hollywood Boulevard. Halfway up the boulevard, you'll take the left-hand fork and run around the backside of Echo Lake near Hollywood and Vine, 50's Primetime Cafe, and the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular. Tell Elsa to just let it go, sister. <laughs> waka waka with the Muppets and then prepare to enter a galaxy far, far away, Galaxy's Edge. This is probably my favorite stretch of this entire course. It was so fun to do a full run through of Galaxy's Edge and Toy Story Land last year. And he's coming. Just kidding. Don't drop on the course. You could hurt someone or yourself. Mile four is at the Walt Disney Presents building. And once again, adjacent to a Joffrey stand that won't be open. <laughs> Continue running and make your way towards the Hollywood Studios arch. Smile big because there will most likely be a photo pass photographer here as well. Make a quick left-hand turn and begin to run up Sunset Boulevard towards Fantasmic and Tower of Terror. Exit the park near Fantasmic. There will be a water and medical tent at the exit of Hollywood Studios. Remember, don't skip these water stops. After exiting the park, you'll find yourself on East Buena Vista Drive until you reach the ramp, which will redirect you onto World Drive. Mile five will be at the top of the ramp and another medical tent will be located just as you make it onto World Drive. Good news is that you'll only be on this part of the highway for just over a mile before you're home free and back on Epcot property. Just before mile six on World Drive, you'll find the only nutrition stop on the course. An additional water stop is also located here, and then you'll have mile six within your sights. Mile seven is just through the final ramp of the course and prior to the hairpin turn that takes you back onto Epcot property. Mile eight is located at the very back of the Epcot parking lot, and this will be the first section of spectators, potentially a large group of them. This is where you may find WDW Radio along with some of the other charities. They like to cheer along this section, and it's really cool to see the spectators lined up in that section of the parking lot. Enter backstage at Epcot near the resort base. Continue backstage and see the final water stop and med stop of this 10 mile course. 
You'll be back on stage at the Imagination Pavilion. Can I get a hallelujah for another real bathroom? Amen. Where you will continue briefly towards World Showcase before mile nine and a quick about face to head back towards Spaceship Earth. We'll continue to run the familiar path near Connections and Creations before running by Guardians for the final time this race weekend. Continue out backstage near Test Track as you would have in days prior before reaching mile 10, your finish line in the cast member parking lot. Congratulations on your 10 miler. The final event of the weekend is the newest offering for Springtime Surprise. In the spirit of Wine and Dine with its fabulous after party, Springtime Surprise runners and their family and friends are able to participate in this special ticketed event, Springtime Surprise Splash at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park. Now, unlike Wine and Dine, where the post-race party is included in the cost of the bib for the half marathon and challenge runners, everyone needs to have purchased an additional ticket for this event. At the time of this script, drafting and recording tickets are still available for purchase. The Springtime Surprise Splash will be held Sunday night, so after the 10 miler, April 21st with a start time of 7 p.m. Party ticket holders will be able to enter the water park early without an additional ticket starting at 5 p.m. If you're taking Disney Resort transportation, you'll board the bus for Disney Springs at your resort and then transfer onto the bus for Disney's Typhoon Lagoon water park once you reach Disney Springs. Buses back to Disney Springs end approximately one hour after the water park closes. The event guide makes mention of ice cream and other snacks and drinks as included in the ticketed price, but there are also additional snacks and beverages which will also be available for purchase. Along with snacks and free reign of the attractions at Typhoon Lagoon, you will be able to enjoy a dance party with a DJ as well as character meet and greets. Y'all let me know what you think about this new offering. I'm really curious to see how it goes. Y'all, we made it to the final event guide video of the 2023-2024 Run Disney Florida in-person race season. I hope this answered any and all burning questions about Springtime Surprise Weekend, the courses, the expo, yoga, whatever else. If by chance we didn't cover something here, please refer to the digital event guide linked below or leave your questions in the comments down below. I hope you all have the best time next week. I will miss being there so much. I wish I could be there, but, but make sure that you send pictures, okay? Yeah, send me pictures and, and videos and just, I'm so excited for y'all. It's gonna be so fun. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, and I will see you in the next one.